Hi, I'm Caio from Atelier RPG. Lately, playing tabletop RPGs in person with friends has become quite difficult. So to satiate that need to move miniatures and cast spells, my wife and I have been playing a lot of Warhammer Underworld. With such, I ended up a little overhyped and ended up buying and painting a lot of warbands for the game. I mean, the game itself is awesome, pretty complex with abilities, inspiration state and deck building that are unique to each warband. But anyway, I really like to have variety in this kind of game, and with 6 complete warbands, that should be enough already. The game pieces are beautiful and super diverse. The cruel Ratman Skaven, the bloody elves Daughters of Cain, the hunting satyrs and Sandhor Sylvaneth, the blessed by filth Nurgle, the berserker dwarves Fire Slayers, and the almighty thundering Stormcast Eternals. That not counting the beautiful scenery pieces. But I still got this one empty board with nothing to put on it. I think it's time to paint a new warband. Let's watch the video! This is Molag and his mob. They're only primed black. I didn't really see a reason to use Xenethal since their sculpts are super well defined. start by layering purple, in random spots, then I apply dark blue, also in random spots, then I clean my brush and with the brush still damp, I blend the two colors together. Now I'll apply dark red in the same fashion as the two other colors. This step of setting the base tones for the skin doesn't really follow any plans. I just mixed colors in an interesting way for the skin to really pop. As always, two thin coats. Molog might have skipped leg day, but we won't. All the leg skin will be blended colors too. His belly and his inner thighs will be ochre, and we will blend that ochre with the adjacent colors as well. At this point, the base skin color is already pretty uneven and pretty interesting. I think all three tones harmonized well. Since Molog is all blue and red tones, the base will have a lot of yellows and derivates, greens and oranges. In case you're wondering why green and orange are derivates from yellow, it's because if you mix yellow, that's a primary color, and blue, that's also a primary color, you get green, and if you mix yellow and red, another primary color, you get orange.
The largest mushroom and others on the head and shoulders will be red with white spots. The classical mushroom look. Most of the small mushrooms and spores will be painted with turquoise at this point, and they'll be layered with white later. The fur loincloth and the leather straps will be painted dark brown, a more neutral tone as to not steal the spotlight from Molog's skin. Now I'll move to the mid-tones of the skin, starting with red. We'll layer it over the deep red. All of the highest points of the model volumes will receive a layer of red, and the largest mushroom will have a tone gradation, deep red in the middle and lighter in the borders. I'll use fuchsia, a color close to pink, and start on the highlights for the red skin, limiting myself to the highest and more central parts that had already been layered red. In the end, I thought the transition was too rough, so I diluted the red paint and washed it over to improve the tone transition. And I believe I got a pretty good result with it. Now we move to purple. I mixed purple with fuchsia to get a lighter purple and layered over the exposed purple parts on the skin. After that, I use fuchsia and pink to highlight the purple parts, limiting the paint to the highest parts only. The deep blue skin will be layered with a medium blue, and as soon as it dries, it will be highlighted with a light blue, the same way with the purple. Here's me trying to make a cool effect on Moloch's back, but using paint that's way too thin. I'll work on it later. In the meantime, I'll highlight the mushroom stems and detail the underside of the caps. Now, I'll dry brush these turquoise spores on his club, touching up any spots where the white paint shouldn't go. Here, I'll finish the mushrooms on his head and his back with white spots. Don't forget to paint the puddle. We'll start defining colors on the frog Moloch holds. Here, I'm using forest green for his skin. Now we'll start the dry brushing of the base. I used forest green over the blended tones. Then I'll dry brush again over the first one, with forest green mixed with grey to set a more neutral tone to the base. 
At this point I had already fixed the effect on Molog's back cracks and I'm applying some highlights with brown on the latter loincloth. I blend dark blue on the puddle's borders, where it would make contact with the ground. The sunken chest will be painted light silver. All of his little moon decorations will be painted gold. The frog got a dark green wash and his eyes got painted yellow. After that, I layer forest green over the wash. I painted the frog spikes with ochre and highlighted them with ivory. With some final details on the base and on the frog, Molog's finished. Let's finish his little buddies! This bat squig was base painted purple and the inside of his mouth deep red. His base was done just like Moloch's. I also dry brushed the base like Moloch's and dry brushed fuchsia over the purple squig. Here I'm already blending pink over the fuchsia and it will be the highlight tone for the bat squig skin. I apply ochre on the teeth, followed by ivory as a highlight. After painting his eyes and blending turquoise on his wings, the bat squeak's done. I mean, with exception of some mushrooms on the base, but I'll do it later. Let's start on the spider room. I use deep red for its cap and forest green for the grass cloud. I mix ochre and yellow for its base skin color. Its base will be done with the same blending technique as the others. I made a gradient with red over the deep red on the cap and I paint all of the protrusions with ivory. I used white on the base of the gas cloud and on its center grooves and as soon as it dried I dry brushed forest green over it leaving white only on the recesses. A dry brush of black on top finishes the gas cloud. This tone transition makes it look very noxious. With the base details finished, the spite room is done. And now to finish the warband, the stalag squig. It's going to get painted like the bases of the others, with the intention that it looks like it's part of the scenery, at least at first glance. It will get a dry brush of forest green, followed by a dry brush of white. Over the white dry brush, a dry brush of yellow and a dry brush of blue on opposite sides. And with Stalag Squig's base finished, Molog's mob is done. And here's the result.
I really like the final result. All elements are very distinct among themselves, and all characters look very vibrant. And now, I have models to place on my empty board. Molag is huge when compared to the other models in Warhammer Underworlds, and he is for sure the star of his own warband. The dude has presence. But still, the board looks kind of empty. Let's solve that next week. As always, subscribe to not miss any new videos, leave a like if you liked, and friends, good games.